So take the front panel of your bag, looking at the bow uppermost, and place that down in front of you. Next, you want to take your zip and place your zip face down onto your bag so that the bag teeth are facing the bag, so it's like it's right sides together, and just centralise that. Now, you may want to consider if you're right-handed or left-handed, whether you want your wrist puller, your wrist um, strap to be at this side. So this will be the left-hand side of the bag as you're looking at it, or the right hand if it's as worn um, when it's done up, or on the other side. I tend to like mine with it on this side. I'm right-handed, but it's completely up to you. There's no real uh, right or wrong way. So I'm just going to position my zip like this with the zip puller on this side. I've got my zip right sides together. The top, the raw edges of the zip, or the edge of the zip tape, and the raw edge of my bag fabric are lined up at the top, and the zip is centralised. The next thing to do is to take your lining fabric, the one without the pocket on it, and place that on top so that you're sandwiching your zip between the lining fabric and the fabric of the bag. And then what you can do is just clip um, those three layers together. So all three raw edges matching. Position nice and carefully and take your time on the zip element of the bag because it really is the crowning glory of this bag to have a nicely set in zip. It's probably the more trickier part too, so make sure that you're feeling nice and sprightly. <laughs> Don't do it in a rush. There we go, so that is now clipped. Now if we turn this through, we can see that the zip has been nicely sandwiched between the lining and the bag. And if we turn that through, then you can see that that is correct from both sides. So you can just do a little check just to see, a little sanity check, just to see that everything's in, in the right place. So what we're going to do in a second is take this over to our sewing machine and using our zip foot, we'll sew through all layers. So through your outer fabric, your zip tape, and your lining fabric all in one go to sandwich the zip. Now this is going to get in the way this great hunky chunk of a zip pull. So let's start by just moving that down a bit. So that's now out of the way. Now when we start sewing we'll start up here, when we get to about here we'll stop, we'll move the zip puller out of the way and we'll carry on down to the end. So we're ready to sew our zip on, but before we do, we need to put our zip foot on our machine. So I'm going to take off my regular sewing foot and I'm going to put on my zip foot. The zip foot has two features. First of all, on the wrong side, you have this um, let in area, which allows the zip to travel over, which allows the presser foot rather to travel over the zip. Um, so that just means that your zip teeth can, can uh, go in here and that allows your presser foot to get nice and close to the edge and then your needle will come down in here and you'll just be able to sew nice and close to the edge of your zip. If you're using a regular um, presser foot you just won't be able to get in as close and it won't look as good and all machines should come with um, a, presser, a, zip, a zip foot so just make sure that you, that you kind of familiarise yourself depending on which machine you're using. Familiarise yourself with your zip foot and make sure that's what you're using. So I've got all of those edges lined up now. And I can see here that my um, zip teeth here are going to travel under this gap um, here, created by that kind of shape on the bottom of my presser foot. I'll start by doing a couple of stitches forward and a couple back. And just take your time when you're doing this. I'll move that thread out of the way. So I'll take off my clips as I go and I can see that everything's nicely lined up. And as I'm sewing there, I can see that my zip teeth are traveling under there. 
and I'm nice and close. Now I can also see that the edge of my zip foot is lining up with the edge of my fabric so I just use that as a reference point and when I come to sew the other side of my zip I can then use that as the same reference point so that the zips are, both sides of the zips are the same. Now I can feel that my zip puller is here and this um, I'm not going to be able to go too much further without it feeling like it's really going to start getting in the way. So make sure that your needle is down in your fabric and you want to lift your presser foot and then you should be able to peel back your lining and you should see just underneath there that you've got your, your zip puller. So you just want to pull that back up to the top um, so that it's out of the way. So we've sewn all the way down here to encase the first side of that zip. So if we open this up, then you can see that you have your lining on this side with your zip in the middle and there's your bag fabric. And if you push that lining back, you begin to see how that bag will look um, when it's finished with the zip up at the top here. So we want to stop the lining from getting caught um, in the zip when it's being undone and done up. So I'm going to do um, an understitch. So what I want to do is just push all the seam allowance towards the lining side and it will want to go that way anyway because the foam is quite stiff and will kind of kick it out towards this way. And then I'm going to just stitch through the lining, making sure that the lining's pressed away from the zip. I'm going to stitch through the lining and the seam allowance of the bag fabric all the way down here. And that will just keep the lining away from the zip as it's being done up and undone. Now on the right side, on the back side, um, this will naturally fold over and fold away. It's quite rigid and stiff, so that probably won't, you won't have a problem with that folding up because it's kind of held in place by the foam. But with the lining, it's a little bit more uh, flexible, I suppose is the right word. So that might sort of fold up and get caught in the zip, which is why we're going to just do this understitch next. So probably a good idea just to make sure that your um, lining is firmly away is just to give it a quick press, folding it sort of folding it away from the zip. So I'm going to keep my zip foot on here just so that I can get fairly close. Um, find a reference point. So I think if I just put my foot down there so that the edge of my zip here, of my presser foot here is to the edge of the fabric, that's probably quite a, a good uh, reference point for me to use so that I can do the same on both sides. I just undo my zip puller so it's a bit out of the way there. There we go. Do a couple of back stitches to begin with. just making sure that this isn't folding up at all, it's really pressed away. I'm coming to the puller now, so I'll just raise my foot, making sure that my needle's down in my fabric. And then I'll just twizzle that zip past um, there. And then I'll just carry on. All the way to the end. Back stitch at the end. So you can see that I have this line of stitching here, and that goes through attaching the underside. So that will help keep the lining out of the way of the zip once that's all pressed down. So just give that one last press, just folding your folding your lining down this way and you can just press along there. And then that is the front panel with the zip inserted. We now want to insert this, the zip on the other side. 
So start with your bow panel facing up towards you. So next we're going to do the other side of our zip. So if you take your, um, your second bag piece and you want to make sure that this pile is running in the right direction. So you've got, if you stroke it this way, that's the pile of the velvet there. You don't want it to be going against the pile. So the top the zip is here at the top. Then we're going to take your bow panel that you've already attached your zip to and we're going to place that on top. And we want to match up this zip with the top edge. Don't worry if this doesn't match up at the bottom as long as it matches up at the top there and you want to centralise everything as well. And then lastly we'll take our second lining piece and making sure that the opening of your pocket is at the top. We're going to place that on top so we're sandwiching the zip between the lining and the back panel so you can think right sides together here right sides together here zip tape sandwiched between the lining and the outer fabric so once you've got that all lined up you can either pin or clip it in place it will feel quite wadgy because you've got all of the um you know those layers of foam all together I've got the zip puller there, so I'm going to have to move that out of the way in a minute. But for now, I'll just clip that in place and I'll wiggle that out of the way when I get over to my machine. So there we are. My zip tape is now sandwiched. If you want to, you can just open this up and just do a quick check and ask yourself, you know, does everything look right? And of course it does because your zip is there on the right side of the bag and it's the back of the zip is there sandwiched between the lining panels. So I know that that's good and that I've lined everything up correctly. So I just want to go back over to my sewing machine now and sew using the zip foot, sew the second half of that zip in place. Put that under my zip foot there, just take that first clip off so it's not in my way. Just check that everything is lining up and then I can do a back stitch to start. down to the end um, and then do a back stitch. Now as I approach the end there I just want to um, wiggle my, my zip puller out of the way. So about here I've got my needle down in my fabric, lift my presser foot and then just wiggle that zip puller back out of the way and actually having that that puller in place makes it a bit easier too. We're going to do the same thing again and just stitch our lining to our zip tape along here. Stitch our lining to our seam allowance along here to do that under stitch that will keep the lining away from the zip teeth. Back stitch to begin. So that's um, all sewn in place and understitched now. So the next thing we want to do is take your bag. So you've got the zip in the middle there. We want to undo the zip to about halfway. In fact, we can undo it almost like three quarters of the way because we're going to turn the bag through this gap. So we want to leave this open. Then we're going to put right sides together for your foam and right sides together of your lining. So you're kind of opening it up like this and then we're just going to match up the edges and pin or clip all the way around. So at this end here 
the foam will naturally want to poke up towards the top so that's fine just clip that in place make sure that your um, little d-ring if you've used one is pushed towards the inside you don't want it out like this you want it tucked inside and again just match up the raw edge there and clip in place do that all the way down to that bottom corner there if it's a few millimeters out that's fine don't kind of force it or create pleats or tucks just um, you know, make sure that everything is sitting happily do the same on the other side so once again you're on this edge here your zip tape or your zip ends should be matched up and your linings and your everything should look clearly matched up big helicopter just gone by um, and then we can just match those up there And then again, clip around the middle. Now you've got, if you look in here, you've got quite a lot of bulk. So you've got your bow and you've got your wrist strap. So don't worry if it feels a bit bulky. You just want to clip all the way around those edges anyway. We've got two layers of foam as well. There we go. So that's, that's now clipped all the way around there. Make sure you've not caught anything. And then we want to clip all the way around the lining as well. So we want to clip all the way around the lining, the bag fabric, and the other side here. Leave the entire bottom open. This is because it's quite a bit to pull through, to turn through. So what we're going to do is rather than leaving a small gap that you have to fit everything through, we're going to leave the entire bottom of the uh, bag lining open and then sew it closed in one go. Something that will make that a bit easier is if we start just by oops, pressing that lining back by about a centimetre here. Flip it round, do the same on the other side. This will just help to make it a bit easier to match things up at the bottom. Just creating um, a kind of a crease line or a guide like that. So I've pressed up the bottom edges each by one centimeter on the lining. And when I sew, I'm going to start here at the corner, come all the way up, go all the way along and come all the way back down again and do another back stitch here. And this method will give me um, a nice big opening to turn my bag through because I've got the bow going on and this foam is that little bit more wadgy as well. So things to think about are leave the entire bottom open. When you come to this bit here, make sure that everything is lined up really nicely. Where we change from lining to bag fabric and with the zip, you want that to be lined up nicely. And also just make sure that everything is tucked in here because you've got that long wrist strap, you've got the bow, just make sure, including as well those little tabs which we're going to use to attach our chain strap, just make sure that everything is tucked in nicely there. And we're ready to sew. I'm going to swap back over to my everyday um, presser foot because we've finished with the zip now. So put your normal presser foot back on. start sewing at um, one side of the lining there so just match everything up and we've got a one centimetre seam allowance start off with a back stitch Take off those clips as you go. Now when you come to this bit, it's a bit bulky, so just take your time. 
make sure that the foam is pointing upwards. And you also want to make so sure that you're catching the end of that zip, but that you are not sewing over the metal teeth. When you come here, just make sure that your D-ring tab is poked inwards, poking inwards. You have got quite a few layers to get through here, so you may wish to just um, increase your stitch length slightly if your stitches feel like they're sinking in and you're not getting anywhere. So I'm coming towards the corner now, so st just stitch into that corner. Make sure that you leave your needle down in your fabric and just swivel round. And make sure that you're catching everything on both sides and then continue down the bottom of your bag. And we just continue until we're all the way back to the other side of the lining. And once again, once you come round to this bit, just make sure that everything is um, lining up. and that's all sewn so there we go we've left this bottom bit open we've stitched up our pressed edge and we've sewn all the way along here down and back along to the end again before you trim anything away just have a look inside your bag and just check that your zip tape has been caught sometimes You've got this little bit of extra here and sometimes you can find that you've still got that fraying loose end of your zip tape showing um, and if it doesn't look like your zip tape has been quite perfectly caught then you can just go back over and do a second row of stitching just coming in a little bit just to make sure that you've caught it that does sometimes happen and a bit more trickier to see on the zip end but when you turn it through you will find out so just before you trim anything away just double check that you have caught your, your zip tape in both sides. So we have a one centimetre seam allowance and that should catch it, but you may want to go just to slightly above one centimetre just to make sure that you catch that zip tape there. So um, we're now ready to turn this through. So we can actually now just trim away a little bit of excess at those corners, just to help reduce the bulk there. You don't want to cut through your stitches but you just want to trim away some of the bulk of the fabric. Don't worry about the lining because that's on the inside and it's also very lightweight. So next we can actually do the exciting part which is to turn our bag through. So this does feel fiddly because it's such a wadgy bag with all of that foam. Got a nice big hole to help you there as well and hopefully you left your zip open and um, then what you can do is grab a point turner and just poke out those corners if you haven't got a point turner you can use a knitting needle or a chopstick so just press out those corners there you might find as well that your bow has flipped around to the other side and you feel like you've got an inside out bow so just, you can just flip that round to the right side if that's happened. And then just sort of put your thumb in there and bring that zip end out. That one should come out nice and easily. Trim off any thread tails that might have made their way through to the outside. And there we have our bag. Before we tuck our lining in we need to close this um, bag lining obviously so so we can just line everything up pop some clips doesn't mean that you have a seam all the way along the inside of your bag but I think the benefit that you get from being able to um, 
turn everything through a bit more easily without crushing it is uh, worth it. But if you were making this bag with a lighter weight um, interfacing instead of the foam, then you may find that you can just leave a small gap and do it that way. But I thought I'd show you this technique um, just so that you can see. There you go. So that's now clipped down in place. So I'm just going to do a small row of stitching right on the edge there. And then I can tuck my lining into my bag and we're finished. So I'm just coming right in on the end there, back stitch to begin with. And then I'm just sewing right along the edge. So there you go. We can now tuck the lining back into our bag and we're finished. Just tuck that down inside, push it into the corners. You may find you have a little bit of slack in the bottom there, but that's okay. And then just give that one more press, pressing the lining to the inside of the bag there. done. I can add my chain strap onto my D-rings and there is our bag with the choice of chain strap, beautiful bow, wrist strap there and internal pocket. So I hope you've enjoyed making that and um, this kit is available in a choice of three colours, the mink, um, the aqua that I'm using here and then also the pink and also available as a PDF or paper pattern from flyingbobbins.com. So do share your makes if you're going to make this bag, do let me see the pictures, you can pop them on social media using the hashtag uh, flying bobbins and I'm sure to see them. I do love to see your creations. Um, I think there are so many things you could do with this bag because you could actually use different fabric for the bow and the background so maybe black and white or something really striking like that. Um, but yeah I hope that um, you enjoy making this. I think it certainly is a great bag for um, the festive season as well as for hol holidays as well in the summer and makes a great gift too. So happy sewing and I'll see you in the next sew along.